Good evening. Welcome to Northwest Tonight with Annabelle Tiffin, our top story. A year of war. The region sends a message of solidarity to the people of Ukraine. We'll hear stories of resilience and courage from the Ukrainian community here. Also tonight, the bitter battle to get Donald Campbell's Bluebird back to Coniston escalates as legal proceedings are launched. Man and I'm here at the Ukrainian Family Hub in Warrington, where I'll be speaking to some families, finding out what support they've been getting. And of course, I'll bring you the full forecast as well. One year on from the Russian invasion of Ukraine, people from across the region have been remembering the lives lost in the conflict. This evening, buildings in every part of the northwest are lit up blue and yellow as a sign of solidarity. For Ukrainian people living in the northwest, many of whom fled here after the fighting started, it's been a poignant day of reflection and prayers for a peaceful future, as Katie Barnfield reports. <laughs> service to pay respects and ask for peace. On the anniversary of Russia's invasion, prayers were said for Ukrainians who had lost their lives and those still living through the war. One of many Ukrainians at the service in Cheatham Hill today was Sasha, who moved to Manchester a year ago under the Homes for Ukraine scheme after fleeing the city of Lviv on her own. When I woke up on February 24th, uh, I was in Lviv uh, and I just saw a message from my friend saying, Sasha, the war has begun. And then I took my earplugs off and I heard the air raid siren. I got really scared and I thought I don't want to die. It's a different thing when you face an army, when you are a soldier and you fight on a battlefield, but when you are in your apartment in, in a tower block and a missile can hit, can hit the apartment any time, you can't withstand that. At 11 a.m., a minute's silence was held to remember those who have died, joining people across the Northwest and the country. In Liverpool, the silence ended with a performance by 13-year-old pianist Elisa Bushieva, who played for refugees in camps in Ukraine and Poland. Tonight, buildings across the region are being lit up in blue and yellow, the colours of the Ukrainian flag. Bob Sopel is chair of Manchester's Ukrainian Association. He says the anniversary is also a time to look forward. It's, it's incredible that Ukraine has actually survived the 365 days uh, and we're praying, for, for, uh, we're praying for, for thanks for that in its first place but also we're praying for the future so that we can get a peaceful solution. I feel like Ukraine is stronger than ever and united and the world is united um, it seems like so um, I can see great light in the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Despite the horrors of the past year, many Ukrainians who have made the Northwest their home refuse to give up hope. Katie Barnfield, BBC Northwest Tonight. Well, we heard from Sasha there, one of the many Ukrainians who moved to the region after the war began. And, and all this week, in fact, we've been hearing from refugee families who now call the Northwest their home. Well, Kay Crewson is in Warrington for us tonight with some more of those refugees. Kay. I am Annabelle. I'm here at the Ukrainian Family Hub here in Kulchuth, where each week around 300 Ukrainians meet up from around the region for help, support, friendship, and to do some incredible there's arts and crafts and some amazing biscuit making going on. All things happen here. It's a real sense of community. Now, one of the people that come here is Katerina. Katerina fled Kyiv last year with her three children and she has now settled with them in Warrington. I spent the day with her and she's been telling me just how difficult this past year has been. I cry because I remember every minute, every second uh, what happened. 
I never think about it's possible happened with my family, with my country. We can uh, decide uh, problems by talk, no by war. Can you think back to last year, where you were, where it all started, where it began? Now, we, in this time, we move by car. Big, bad, bad, bad traffic because many hundred thousand people move from Kyiv and we always read phone news, 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 was many disinformation. We all was in panic, panic, many, many people panic. Could you ever imagine life before and moving countries with children? Never, never dream about move to another country, never think about this. I have happy life. I have good apartment, I have good job, I like my job. I, my children study in school, in college. We was very happy family. And what, what work are you doing here? Uh, now I work uh, cleaner. I hope if my English will better, I can maybe look for more quality job, but this is not important for me now. I study English in school very many years ago but my english i understand my english bad and now i continue study english it's in not college bad. it's very mm. good need study more uh, my i accent. think you do very well <laughs> in in such a short time maybe need say thank you for my teaching for my <laughs> teacher's school do you like living in warrington yes i like living in warrington Warrington very similar with uh, town where I was born. You've got a very different life now than you had if you could choose which life would you be in? Now I'm happy. Now my children happy. I'm happy but Ukrainian in my head. This is my motherland and I want peace in all world, no only in Ukraine, in all world. Kater Katerina told me that her and her children spend a lot of time here at the, fam at the family club. And the person who set that up joins me now. This is Kate. Kate, you set all this up. I know. Why? <laughs> Listen, um, I don't know, as a mom, as a wife, as somebody that, you know, is very close to a family, I watched the news last year like many people did, and I don't know, just there's a real sense of needing to do something, and when my family came to live with me at probably mid-April last year, um, I wanted them to be able to meet other Ukrainian people, and that's where the idea came from, really. It's hard to believe, given the real sense of warmth, of love, of, of community spirit, that this didn't exist. This wasn't here, and now look at it. I know, and this is a bit of a derelict room as well, so thank you to everyone who supported regenerating the room. Um, I know, crazy, and we've done so many things in that time. We've celebrated International Ukrainian Day, we celebrate their traditions, we come together, and we've got a real sense of community. There's a lot of love in this room for each other, over 70 volunteers making this possible. Um, but yeah, there's a real sense of feeling like they can, it's their home, their, their bit of safety here in the Northwest. And, and Katerina did say to me that she has only been met with kindness here in the Northwest and kind-hearted people, and, and you really are oh, one of them. Thank you. Thank you. It's, I couldn't have done it without huge volunteers, though, and lots of people that have made this possible. Um, but it means so much to me to be able to give something back um, and really actually make a difference. And a lot of people that have then volunteered or have helped, um, people who've helped make the space possible, workmen, builders, have said, you've allowed us to do something. Because a lot of people say, I want to do something for Ukraine, and they don't know what to do or how to start. Well, it's incredible. Oh, thank you. Thank you it's much. absolutely amazing, and there is a real sense of love. That's it from me here for now, Annabelle. But I will be back, of course, at the end of the programme with a full forecast and the promise of some toasted marshmallows. Very nice. Kay, thank you very much. On to some other news now. And a 14-year-old boy is among five people who've been jailed for life today for the murder of an 18-year-old man in Liverpool last April. The victim, Michael Tui, was about to become a father for the first time when he was beaten to death in a drugs turf war. Our Merseyside reporter Andy Gill was at Liverpool Crown Court for the sentencing. 
Michael Tui's family say he was killed as he'd started to turn his life around. His son, Michael Jr., was born after his father's murder. In April last year, a 14-year-old boy telephoned a man called Kieran Williams to say Michael was in the London Road area of Liverpool. The judge said this was effectively a call to arms to teach Michael a lesson. A series of calls led to the three Williams brothers and a man called Stephen McInerney chasing Michael into an internet cafe where they beat and kicked him to death. He was chased into the internet cafe and what Michael must have gone through as he'd seen people come in through that shop um, and then different people entered and there was obviously an increase of the offenders who came through the door. The feelings that Michael went through really are unimaginable. Police say this was a complex inquiry, but the jury were helped by a police forensics video of the crime scene. This showed where hand, foot and fingerprints were placed. Some were in locations, which meant the attackers could only have been where Michael was beaten and not in the cafe for innocent reasons. You had the public area of the internet cafe, but what, what it was is Michael was uh, chased through the property and there were footwear and fingerprints that could only be left in pursuit due to the orientations of the footwear and the handprints as they jumped over the counter as they chased Michael. His Honour Judge David Aubrey KC described the attack as swift, brutal, ferocious and sustained. He said Michael was scared, terrified and shaking and was shouting, help me, save me, save me. Kieran, Anthony and Michael Williams and Stephen McInerney were jailed for life with a minimum of 18 years. The 14-year-old boy was sentenced to life detention with a minimum of eight years. Michael Tui's family say words can't express the pain they feel every day. Andy Gill, BBC Northwest Tonight, Liverpool. A 16-year-old girl has died after being struck by a car which mounted a pavement in Oldham after crashing with another vehicle. Flowers have been left where it happened on Rochdale Road just after 1.30 yesterday afternoon. A man in his 20s has been arrested on suspicion of causing death by dangerous driving and police are appealing for dash cam footage. Hundreds of pupils staged a protest at a Merseyside school after male teachers inspected the length of girls' skirts. Rainford High says it was ensuring uniform rules were upheld, but St Helens MP Mary Rimmer says she's disgusted by the treatment of female pupils. The school emphasised that both female and male teachers were involved in the inspections. And you can see many more stories on the BBC News website tonight, including a monument honouring Ukraine is coming to Liverpool's iconic strawberry fields in time for Eurovision in May. Plans for hundreds of homes in the Saddleworth countryside have been approved after a judge ruled against a judicial review. And plans to introduce a blanket 20 mile an hour speed limit across all residential areas of the Isle of Man have moved a step closer. So that's more on the BBC News website and catch up with Northwest tonight on the BBC iPlayer. Now, if you've been shopping recently, you will know that it's getting increasingly hard to buy certain fruit and vegetables, with retailers and the government blaming poor weather and a lack of imports for the shortages. Well, our local market traders have also been hit by supply issues and price rises, but for now at least have full shelves, as Phil Cunliffe has been finding out. Scenes like this are becoming a common sight for those shopping in the fruit and veg aisles. Tesco, Aldi, Asda and Morrisons are among the supermarket giants placing limits on the number of items people can buy. Two for three man on the strawberry! It's why some people are choosing to shop elsewhere, like Bolton's Indoor Market, home to dozens of independent traders. Well, there's nothing at supermarkets on shelves, so you come on to the market. Not been to the supermarket today, but looking on the TV, we just thought there, were, there seemed to be a shortage on the TV, so I thought, come here and there's an abundance of everything, so it's not a problem. The shelves in Iqbal's store are well stocked, for now, but he's worried that suppliers keep putting their prices up. Tomatoes are a little bit uh, hard to get hold of, like peppers, uh, cucumbers. You can get hold of them, but they're expensive. They've gone sky high. Mangoes, for example, £2 each. Uh, like everything else is shooting up. My ginger, from four quid to five fifty, it's gone up to. And this woman came in, a Chinese woman, she said, she started laughing. Hey, I'm not paying this much. I said, that's up to you, love, you know. So that's it. People have to get used to it. 
The government accepts that people want to buy all types of fruit and veg at all times of the year. But to raise coffee, the Environment Minister caused a stir yesterday by suggesting that people buy less of things like tomatoes at this time of year and more seasonal veg. But is there an appetite for things like the humble turnip? Absolutely not, would you? <laughs> no, no, they're horrible, aren't they? Yeah, I like turnips with carrots, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Cheese and turnip sandwich? Not really. <laughs> no, no, cheese and onion, but no, no, not cheese and turnip, no. The reason for the shortages is because we've had bad weather in Spain. We are still getting the gear, but the prices have gone up. And it's not us having people's pants down, it's just how it is. So, I mean, we're working on small profit. Look at them peppers there. Two, in, two peppers for £1.50, I've never even heard of it. I'm normally six for £2. We just have to grim and bear it for the next four or five weeks. Four to five weeks could be slightly optimistic. As turnips and leeks are added to the list of foods becoming increasingly scarce, some producers are warning shortages could last until well into May. Phil Cunliffe, BBC Northwest Tonight, Bolton. Now, legal proceedings have been issued in a row over the ownership of Donald Campbell's record-breaking Bluebird. Coniston's Ruskin Museum wants engineer Bill Smith to return the craft, which he's been restoring in North Tyneside. His Bluebird project team was enlisted to repair it in 2006 and has since claimed a stake in its ownership due to that work. Juliet Phillips reports. After intense restoration work, this was Bluebird back on water. Five years on, Coniston's Ruskin Museum have issued legal proceedings, urging the engineer who carried out the work to return the craft. Bill Smith and his team recovered the wreckage and repaired it. He has since claimed a stake in its ownership. Yeah, well, the museum was only ever given, I quote, the recovered wreckage. Uh, and everything else that's been brought to the party, Bluebird Project brought, um, at no cost to the museum. And the fact of the matter is that they own some of it and we own some of it. So again, we're quite happy for them to display all of our hard work, but it has to be subject to a deal whereby we can carry on maintaining it and looking after it. In 1967, Donald Campbell died in the hydroplane while trying to break the water speed record on Coniston Water. In 2001, Bill Smith recovered the wreckage of Bluebird. Five years later, Donald Campbell's daughter Gina gifted it to Coniston's Ruskin Museum on the understanding Bill Smith would restore it. In 2018, Bluebird was back on the water in Scotland, but since then, relationships have deteriorated. I'm appalled, to be absolutely honest, Juliet. I mean, you know, um, OK, he took, made a magnificent job of restoring Bluebird. She was amazing, fantastic, and I had the privilege of seeing her run at Butte. Um, but then was the time to return her back to the museum, as was agreed. But instead, so here we are after 2018, here we are. In a statement today, the Ruskin Museum said the legal action was a last resort. For Donald Campbell's daughter Gina, bringing Bluebird back to Coniston remains vitally important. It is so important that she returns to Coniston. It's the only thing that matters to me, my family, my father's memory, my father's integrity, his achievements, everything, and to the people of Coniston. Bill Smith says he and his team remain open to reaching a deal to return Bluebird to the museum. Juliet Phillips, BBC Northwest Tonight. Richard's here with the sport now. Um, obviously, Manchester United in the Carabao Cup final on Sunday. And confidence yeah. must be really high after that thrilling comeback last night against Barcelona. I mean, we were just saying now, yeah. at the moment, you can't write United off from, from coming back, even if they're behind. There's something different about Manchester United now, isn't there, Annabelle? And they showed that last night. Uh, as you know, they, they went a goal down against Barcelona and Old Trafford came storming back to win 2-1 on the night, 4-3 on aggregate, they'll face Real Betis now in the last 16 of the Europa League, which is the perfect way to build up, isn't it, to Sunday's Carabao Cup final against Newcastle, which could be the first silverware under new boss Eric Ten Hag, a manager who clearly has his sights set on bringing the glory years back to Old Trafford. It's a magical Manchester night. A magical win in front of fans who, before the game, were full of confidence that the good times are on their way back. Excited. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. Can't wait. It's a good feeling after a very long time. <laughs> it's looking bright for you, not really? Ten hard, brilliant. It's confidence built on a terrific run of form, making it count from the spot. But when United have found themselves in a spot of... Team to play against, so we have to find a way to win them. I think it's about 
glory and honor in football. So we have to put everything in to get that cup to Manchester. There's no doubt that Eric Ten Hag has created a completely different feeling here at Old Trafford, a belief based on what United fans are seeing, not to mention just one defeat since early November. And many Red supporters believe that that first trophy under their manager could well be on its way. I am confident. I'll have to be careful here. Cautiously optimistic, shall we say, because I don't get too carried away. But you just look at this manager and he just keeps getting everything right. Does it feel, Jay, like the first time since Sir Alex Ferguson, where you've got a manager who you believe is gonna gonna take you to the top. For me it does. Now people could look at it and go, well, we you know, we, we won a League Cup under Jose, we won a Europa League under Jose in his first season. But if you recall, that came at the, almost the expense of the league. We were shocking in the league. He's getting a tune out of the players that were already here. He's brought in some good signings. Don't want to get too carried away, but it feels like the beginning of a, an era. Fingers crossed United can do it. Now, Everton's battle against relegation has been buoyed with the news that England goalkeeper Jordan Pickford has signed a new four-and-a-half-year contract at Goodison Park. Pickford said it was a massive moment for him to stay on at such a special club. He'll be part of an Everton side who take on Aston Villa tomorrow and the boss says he's delighted. I think he's, it's a sign he's enjoying our new, new regime, if you like. And I know he's been a, a fantastic player, so we want him to continue doing that. And, and any way we can rub off on him and help him to continue his development will be, will be great if he feels there is stuff, and I think there is. Great news for the Blues. Elsewhere, Liverpool travelled to Crystal Palace with champions Manchester City at Bournemouth. Cricket now, and England, a squad including Lancashire players Kate Cross and Sophie Eccleston, have been knocked out, unfortunately, of the Women's T20 World Cup by South Africa. In what was a dramatic semi-final, South Africa ran out winners by six runs. England have played some great stuff, but it's the hosts who go through to Sunday's final. In Super League, Salford lost 24-10 to Hull KR last night. Our other top flight teams, though, will be hoping for better fortune this weekend, including world champions, yes, world champions, St Helens, who now turn their attention to defending their Super League title. Saints, who are aiming to win it for the fifth time in a row, travel to Castleford on Sunday. We're going to face Wakefield, Warrington, Huddersfield, with Lee travelling to Catalan tomorrow. Um, be great to see how Saints start. They'll be one or two bumps and bruises, you would think, Annabelle. Also, it'd be great to see if Lee can get off the mark back in Super League. Yeah. Difficult match, but let's hope they can. Absolutely. And, of course, as you say, good luck to Manchester United on Sunday. Definitely. We'll hear all about it on Monday. Uh, thanks very much, Richard. Well, we met uh, Kay earlier when she was in cultures with Ukrainian refugees. On this very poignant day, a year on since Russia invaded Ukraine. Well, let's go back to Kay now. Um, and... Kay, this is a poignant day, and we heard earlier from Katerina, who, who misses her home. But, I mean, for some people now, they are really part of the community, aren't they? Oh, Annabelle, such a huge sense of community. The love, I wish you could feel that love through the camera because it is incredible here. A real sense of solidarity and, and just support. It's, absolutely beautiful and I, I genuinely feel quite honoured to be here tonight and I've got with me two beautiful girls Dominique and Natalia and um, Dominica tell me what is life like for you here in England now I'm very happy that I'm here because I have very good life I met up a lot of new people new friends my English friends from my school I have amazing school I met a lot of Ukrainian friends I'm very happy. I have very good sponsor, but now it's not my sponsor, it's my family. I'm very happy that I met up my family, my English family. I'm very, I want to say thank you very much for any help. I'm very happy that I'm here, but I'm still miss for Ukraine because it's my motherland. And Natalia, just quickly from you, what does the hub mean to you? The hub means uh, the part of Ukraine here in England. When you come and uh, talk to Ukrainian people, can feel a, a f home when you you miss home, no, very well. And it's such a good gift from Kate for all of England people who come here and volunteer here. You just feel the support of Ukraine. It's the most important thing for 
thank you thank you thank you both so much honestly it's absolutely incredible i'm going to come back because the children have got me marshmallows waiting but i know i need to give you the all important forecast now it's dry and clear but chilly here in warrington and similar scenes right across the northwest with clear skies but it will lead to a cold night with the breeze light from the north so we're looking at temperatures down to just below freezing we are expecting a frost for first thing tomorrow morning but it sets us up actually for a really decent start to your weekend it will be chilly it will be frosty but there'll be plenty of sunshine first thing we're going to see cloud rolling in from the east now that could be thick enough for the lights of, of burnley of stockport to see the odd isolated shower really unlucky if you catch one the breeze will be a little fresher tomorrow, so temperatures 7 or 8 degrees, the actual average temperatures for this time of year, but it'll feel more like 5 degrees, it will feel colder. Similar scenes then overnight into Sunday with variable clouds, some clear skies and temperatures just hovering around about freezing, there will be a little bit more in the way of cloud. High pressure is in charge for the next week, so settled conditions, but it will stay on the chilly side. Annabelle, from me here in Colchis, honestly, I've welled up a couple of times today, but it has been absolutely fantastic. And uh, I've still got my name on those marshmallows. <laughs> Lovely. Kate, thank you very much indeed. And I should say thank you to everyone from the Ukrainian community who have shared their stories over the past week and indeed over the past year. Good night.